Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And... How nice. How nice. I'm glad y'all seem to be in a good mood. It has been a tense couple years, you know? <laughs> what with the pandemic, the near fall of democracy, and me recently finding out that Scooby-Doo wasn't the dog who said, ruh ro <laughs> It's Astro. <laughs> Look it up. What else don't I know? Was I adopted? And the stresses of life don't look like they're easing anytime soon. Exhibit A, Vladimir Putin has stationed tens of thousands of Russian troops along the Ukrainian border, and Ukraine is a democratic ally whose security America has promised to defend. ruh -roh. <laughs> Now, the world may be standing at the precipice of war between two nuclear-armed powers. To, es to de escalate tension. Today, Biden and Putin talked about Ukraine in a video call. It makes sense. The only way to resolve a delicate situation that requires crystal clear communication <laughs> is two old men on a Zoom. <laughs> we don't know the results of the call yet. We do not know the results of this call yet. But Biden made it clear that if Russia invades, the US and our allies would respond with strong economic and other measures. I know we're trying to avoid a hot war here, but those are some pretty vague threats. <laughs> Son, if you throw a party when your mother and I are out of town, we will respond with strong reactions and emotions, TBD. <laughs> it's unclear, you gotta be firm, it's unclear what happens next now, but at the end of the call, the two presidents tasked their teams to follow up. Very good, we will have our people follow your people. I mean... <laughs> follow up. Perhaps they talk about it over a nice bowl of poison. I mean soup. <laughs> and we all know best place to enjoy soup is near a window. <laughs> enjoy the view and maybe put on these poison underpants. I mean soup underpants. <laughs> now, if you're worried these rising tensions with Russia will lead to World War III with Russia, don't be ridiculous. It's gonna be World War III with China. We got a preview yesterday. You see, the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics ended just four months ago. So naturally, the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics will start in a little under two months. Because thanks to COVID, time doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> the next four Super Bowls will be held concurrently, and Tom Brady has won them all. <laughs> so, doesn't matter. Yeah, Tom. So, Winter Games, that's always fun. America cleans up at those medals, except not all Americans will be making this trip to China because the Biden administration announced that due to China's human rights atrocities against the Uyghurs, the U.S. will not send any diplomatic or official representation to the 2022 Winter Olympic Games. But now who's going to compete in the four-man ambassador bobsled? <laughs> but here's the thing. These human rights abuses are unconscionable. And the president is doing the right thing by drawing a line. And with that in mind, I would like to announce tonight that CBS will be the official network of not watching <laughs> the Olympic Games. We are not, not, no, no, no. Okay. You got, you got to take a stand. Uh -huh. CBS will not be broadcasting any of the action, and that is solely because we care about human rights. And not because we were outbid by another network every year for the last 20 years. <laughs> so forget the Olympics. The only marathon you need to worry about is back-to-back -back reruns of Blue Bloods. <laughs> Though I hear Tom Selleck's mustache can be used as one of those curling brushes. <laughs> At first, the Chinese responded in state-owned media, quote, to be honest, the Chinese are relieved to hear the news because the fewer U.S. officials come, the fewer viruses we brought in. <laughs> hey, hey, China, not cool. No one knows exactly how the virus emerged, but we know it didn't start here. The only wet market we have in America is that subway station with the lady selling churros under the mystery drip. <laughs> Knock it off. So, tensions between the U.S. and China and Russia are rising, but it's not all gloom and doom. Some of it's gloom and data. Because in anticipation of global climate catastrophes, Earth is getting a black box to record events that lead to the downfall of civilization. <laughs> well, 
Why don't they make the whole planet out of the black box? Am I right? <laughs> The goal of this black box is to use storage drives to provide a record for future civilizations to understand what caused our demise <laughs> by recording every step we take toward climate catastrophe. And we have a statement from the designer of the black box. Black box. He was actually singing inside the black box, apparently. <laughs> and I have a bone to pick. This is assuming all future generations will know how to access our old technology. I can't find the dongle for my digital camera from 2008. That trip to Antigua? God. <laughs> Designers say the black box will be a monolith about the size of a city bus, made of three-inch thick steel and placed in an open field in Australia. Really? Australia? You know about Australia, right? Oh, here's the black box. Crikey, it looks like it's covered in a mist of spiders. Now it's being carried off by millions of cannibal crabs. Better head indoors, it's starting to rain snakes. Don't worry, that happens every hour during rainy snake season. Now, if you excuse me, I have to fight this wallaby. Put him up, Pouchy! <laughs> now, put him up! The project is a collaboration between a marketing communications company called Cleminger BBDO and the University of Tasmania. The school is very excited to be hosting this monolith, as explained in this statement from the dean of the University of Tasmania. <laughs> what are you going to do? He's, he's got tenure. <laughs> so, turns out the inside of the black box is basically a huge hard drive that will gather climate change data like atmospheric carbon dioxide levels and average temperatures and use an algorithm to scour the web for tweets and news. News, okay, I understand that. But I don't know if tweets are the best record of humanity. Well, it looks like past humans ignored global warming and tools too late, never invested in green energy, and most of them killed themselves doing something called the milk crate challenge. <laughs> Unfortunately, developers estimate that the data storage will run out in 30 to 50 years. Hmm. Not the most encouraging sign. <laughs> that's, going in, that's like going in for surgery and having your doctor say, uh, do we validate parking? Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> just, just leave the keys with the nurse. Just leave the keys with the nurse. Speaking of catastrophes, uh, there's news about California representative and goldfish watching you have sex. <laughs> Devin Nunes. Yesterday, Nunes announced he's leaving Congress by the end of the year. But they're so happy for him. They're happy for him, you know? That's good. You passed. He won't be out of a job, thanks to former President Dolt45. <laughs> Because Nunes has been named the CEO of the former president's new media company, despite having no apparent prior experience working in the tech industry or as an executive. Instead, Nunes is a former dairy farmer. <laughs> well, then he's the perfect guy to make money off the old president, because he has experience milking things with leathery skin. <laughs> Nunes. Nunez does have one bit of history with social media. He once sued Twitter over an account purporting to be Nunez's cow. <laughs> it's a true story. So what happened was somebody started a Twitter feed called Devin Nunez's cow. <laughs> and this cow said negative things about Devin Nunez. <laughs> like he's a bad farmer and stuff like that. So Nunez sued Twitter for $250 million for defamation. The case was, of course, dismissed. And we still don't know who is behind the cow Twitter account. All we know is that it's someone smarter than Devin Nunes. <laughs> so probably a cow. <laughs> now, usually... <laughs> now, usually, when the former president appoints someone who is grossly incompetent to an important position, he has a good reason. They're related to him. 
That means the only reason Nuna's got this gig is because Jared, Don Jr., and Eric all turned it down. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, no can't do. <laughs> that job is beneath me. But I'd still like to be considered for the role of chief executive hug receiver. <laughs> Bring it in. Bring it in, Dad. Let the healing begin. Even if you didn't catch it, this pandemic has been bad for your health because a new study has found that from 2019 to 2020, average blood pressure readings increased. Well, yeah. For some reason, we were all a little on edge last year. <laughs> In fact, here's some footage of my most recent blood pressure test. <laughs> One of the researchers explained, we observed that people weren't exercising as much during the pandemic, weren't getting regular care, were drinking more and sleeping less. Well, now you don't have to choose between sleeping and drinking. Thanks to the new product, Stephen Colbert's Sleepy Time Drink Mask. <laughs> to unconsciousness and beyond. <laughs> this is serious. This is, this is serious. This is serious because over time, high blood pressure can damage the heart, the brain, and sexual function can also be affected. I believe that's the plot of The Wizard of Oz. The Tin Man wants a heart, the Scarecrow wants a brain, and the Cowardly Lion wants an erection. <laughs> get it up, get it up. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Kristen Davis and Cynthia Nixon. But when we come back,